This is part one of two lectures that I'm going to take on um, volume rendering um, within the context of scalar field visualization. When we think about scalar field visualization and specifically at 3D scalar data, we already saw how isosurfaces allowed us to explore the scalar field. Uh, there is yet another approach where we would we'd like to see the entire data set using transparency or opacity. So this is a very powerful approach. It allows us to get the overview of the entire scalar field um, and is called volume rendering. So with volume, here are some examples of um, volume visualization using the volume rendering technique. Notice how in the tooth we are able to see through the entire volume and yet um, clearly uh, um, highlight different aspects of the uh, tooth. Uh, the same holds for the other pictures. The technique that we are going to study is called direct volume rendering. Um, isosurface extraction is often uh, referred to as indirect volume rendering where we are visualizing or rendering the volume indirectly by, via extracting isosurfaces. In contrast, the, met, the approach that we are going to study today is going to uh, use a direct mapping of the underlying 3D data and it is going to use a transparent or a translucent gel um, uh, to represent the uh, volume um, so that we can get an overview. So the idea is that uh, we associate different properties to this translucent gel, uh, properties that depend on the scalar values and hence um, obtain a interesting and useful visualization of the volume. So volume rendering essentially considers the volume as a translucent gel. Rays are sent through into the volume um, and these rays accumulate colors and opacity um, where the colors and opacity are determined based on the scalar values at the points along the ray. So essentially for each um, pixel that um, we have in the image plane, you again shoot a ray from the eye towards that particular pixel and this ray goes into the volume through an entry point and, uh, and uh, exits the volume through an exit point. Between the entry and exit points, we sample the ray at, let's say, regular intervals. The scalar values at those sample points um, are used to determine different colors at each point. These colors are composited to obtain the color for corresponding to the pixel that to find the ray in the first place. This is the approach that we will employ for volume rendering. So this particular approach for volume rendering um, is often referred to as ray casting. Um, unlike ray tracing, where we recursively trace the ray, here we are looking at essentially a single ray and just casting it into the volume. So there is no recursion here and hence the method is simpler than the ray tracing approach. We sample the ray um, to begin with uh, uniformly along the ray. There are sophisticated techniques that consider non-uniform sampling as well. We compute the scalar value at these sample points using our familiar trilinear interpolation. Then we use a color lookup table also called a transfer function 
to um, convert the scalar values to color. Next, we accumulate these colors. Um, essentially, this accumulation will integrate all the optical properties of the individual points. So this is step four to obtain a color at the corresponding pixel. So uh, like I mentioned, the accumulation of the color is essentially an integral. The total color, the total accumulated color depends on the sampled colors along the ray together with the transmittivities or the opacity at each of those points. Both the color and the transmittivity or opacity is determined by a transfer function that maps every scalar value to a color and a transmittivity. So given these values C sub i and T sub i, the total color is essentially an integral over the ray of C sub i multiplied by T sub i. The transmittivity T sub i here is essentially um, just the 1 minus opacity. It corresponds to transparency. Of course, for um, practical purposes, we do look at discrete versions where the integral is approximated using a discrete sum. The color is now C bar equals the summation of C sub i T sub i. Again, note that T the transmittivity is 1 minus the opacity. The opacity uh, at every point depends on the previous sample points. This is crucial. So essentially, the um, uh, opacity at a, at a particular um, point i, uh, a sub i, um, depends on the how much color is allowed to be transmitted through all the points j equals 1 to n. So the opacity um, a sub i can now be written as 1 minus the product of all these transmittivities uh, for all points j equal to 1 to n. And this expression can be plugged in to the expression for c bar to give us the color at a particular um, point um, and um, summing this up over all sample points on the ray, we get the color at the pixel um, uh, corresponding to that ray. Finally, uh, the transfer function um, essentially uh, allows us to map scalar values on the x-axis to uh, the RGB, red, green and blue components of color and opacity shown here in black. So the, uh, the transfer function is essentially a combination of four um, 1D functions, one for R, G and B components and the other fourth one for the opacity. Designing this transfer function is one of the uh, important challenges in um, volume rendering. The histogram of the scalar field is often used to design the transfer function, uh, especially if it is done by an expert user. So for example, in this case, we see that the histogram indicates that the scalar values um, uh, above let's say 1.5 are sparse. There are very few uh, points with scalar values above 1.5. So maybe we want to associate these points with higher opacity so that they can be highlighted and assign lower opacities or more transparent colors to the lower values um, because uh, several voxels um, have scalar values in the range 0 to 0 0.5 or 0 to 1. And of course, different colors at different um, 
scalar ranges allows us to highlight the different features within the uh, field. In the next lecture, we will look more carefully at the transfer function and look at a few approaches towards designing the transfer function automatically.